Okay, roll call, Gene. Bonasek? Ekis? Amo? Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Here. Cheney? Here. Dillard? Here. DeSalvo? Present. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Hemnitz? Here. Kulasek? Here. Paduk? Here. Ruskevich? Here. Sullivan? Here. Turnbull? Here. Vero? Here. Wong? Brescia? Here. 20 present, one absent. Yep, just came up. Okay, this is a reconvening of Tuesday's meeting. Um, and I will entertain public participation, three minute time period. Dan Castricone is up first. Yes, thank you. And, uh, Shannon Wong is not here because of an illness in her family. Thank you, Antoinette. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm sure that when you went into executive session last week, you heard uh, a bunch of arguments Probably you heard some legal arguments about, you know, maybe the county doesn't have standing. You know, maybe we shouldn't be involved in this for a legal reason. I can certainly tell you that this is going to have a huge effect on Orange County Sewer District Number 1, which you guys run. Any of those kind of arguments are nonsense. This is a huge effect on us. And you guys certainly have standing to jump into the suit. Perhaps someone said it's going to be a waste of taxpayer money. I'd like you to take a... Just think about 100,000 or 200,000 that you finally end up spending in this suit versus 100 million that you might have to spend for a new sewage treatment plant. Or maybe 200 million if you add in all the infrastructure that you're going to have to add once this annexation goes through, if you don't join this lawsuit and it does go through. One of the things that I was thinking about was the Constitution. It says in there that there shall be no establishment of religion. And we all, you guys all, took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I'd say here's an opportunity to actually go and do that and defend the Constitution of the United States. Because you're not going to be able to, if you want to rent one of these apartments in this annexation land, I think you're going to have a real hard time doing it. Because it's going to be a place where religion is established. I think about the river that needs protecting. I think about the, the value of people's homes that need protecting and the tax base. I ask you guys to do the right thing. We've read the environmental impact study. It was a load of nonsense. There's no reason in the world why a rational board would have voted yes. And here we have these two, in my opinion, irrational boards that voted yes to this. We need checks and balances. Our last hope of putting a check on this is, of course, we need your help. The good people behind me have scraped and saved and raised as much money as they possibly can in order to go forward with a lawsuit to save their homes. We, the people of Southern Orange County, heck, of all Orange County, of all the Hudson Valley, are asking for you to help us and support us to join this lawsuit and help us stop this illegal land grab. Thank you. Before we go on to our speaker, uh, we have one speaker that I remember spoke the other day, Brian Bohan. Uh, this is a continuation of the same meeting, so you already spoke. And Dan Burke, did you speak? Dan Burke here? You didn't speak, okay. Uh, next speaker is Paulette Brown. I come with a smile again. It's nice seeing all of you. I really feel like I'm getting to know you. You're mostly very good people, and I know you work very hard trying to speak from my heart today and not from my notes. I am here because I know you'll do the right thing. Personally, 
I think it's your decision whether you want to pay a personal attorney $250,000 or if you want to join in with the other municipalities. My issue is Mr. Chapman. I am on the Town of Monroe Democratic Committee. I'm an elected official. I'm a council person for District 5. I've had years of contact with members of the Town of Monroe Board. Before the town supervisor, Mr. Doles, threatened my life in front of 300 people, he told me at the end of a Democratic meeting that Langdon will do whatever he asks Langdon to do. Now, I'm sure Mr. Chapman is a very nice man, but I feel that he is too enmeshed with the Town of Monroe Board, and I feel that it's a conflict of interest for him to even be in the back room on Tuesday giving his opinion. He should absolutely recuse himself and have nothing to do with this. Thank you very much. We're all good people up here. Some of us might have bad intentions, but we're all good people. <laughs> okay, next speaker is Teresa Pierce. Way we are. I have been a resident of Orange County all of my life. I've been following the news, and even though it's some distance from where I live, what's going on, I find that all I read in the paper are about the impacts to water and sewer. I have not seen any mention about the impact, the financial impact that's going to be faced by Orange County in the future. We currently, from what I understand, our Medicaid services are really being drained by the KJ Village. Now, at the rate that they reproduce in the future, that we're going to be drained so poorly that many of the people are, the taxes are going to be going up. A lot of longtime residents from the area of Orange County are going to be leaving. And in no time at all, our Orange County is going to be faced with bankruptcy. And I urge you to think about all the people in Orange County. Not, I've read where they say they are entitled. Well, what about the husband and wife who work full-time jobs, have to support a family, and find it increasingly difficult to make ends meet? I urge you to start thinking about the people, all the people of Orange County, not just a specific sector of our citizenship. And I urge you to uh, object or challenge the uh, annexation and also to vote yes in supporting the uh, going into a lawsuit and to fight this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hi, uh, Carol Maluli, Central Valley. Uh, first of all, I guess I just want to say that uh, I would urge you to vote to um, consider the lawsuit against the annexation in the town of Monroe. And I think actually uh, a blank check would be more appropriate as opposed to putting a limit on how much uh, money you plan on spending. Um, I've lived here since 1971. <coughs> And I've always, uh, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, and I've always loved the fact that um, what I miss most about New York City was the fact that it was very diversified. And I feel that we have that in Orange County. You know, I can get my um, Spanish food, I can get my Yiddish food, I could get my uh, Italian food. Uh, but I, I still find that what's going on with the annexation is uh, a huge problem because I think we have, um, I'm going to read to you, in my town it says, welcome to Woodbury. In Curious Joel it says, welcome to Curious Joel, a traditional community of modesty and values. In keeping with our traditions and religious customs, 
we kindly ask that you dress and behave in a modest way while visiting our community. This includes wearing long skirts or pants, covered necklines, sleeves past the elbow, use appropriate language, maintain gender, this is the one that I really find the most offensive, maintain gender separation in all public areas. All public areas. Whoa. Okay. So thank you for respecting our values and please enjoy your visit. Well, quite frankly, I don't feel welcomed in Curious Joe. And I think that, um, that when you, if you decide not to spend the money to fight the annexation, that you're advocating a lifestyle that imposes on my freedom of speech, my freedom of behavior, and my freedom of dress, along with all of the environmental issues that have already been documented, and along with the flawed uh, environmental impact statement. So again, I'm just gonna ask you to please vote in favor of fighting the annexation, not just because of environmental, but because of a lifestyle that they're trying to protect and expand. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, Chairman Brescia and County Legislators. Uh, I am Dan Burke. I'm a member of the town board, Monroe Town Board. I have lived with these annexation applications for the past 20 months. On September the 8th, I voted on these annexation applications. My vote is a matter of record. It is posted on the Town of Monroe website. I voted no to the 507 acres and yes to the 164 acres. I have the honor of representing all the citizens of Monroe. I, I received... All right, let's get that out and don't take it out of my three minutes. Dan, address us, please. Okay, thank you, Charlie. Uh, um, Okay. Right, so I have the honor of representing all the citizens of Monroe, some of whom are here today. I received 1,371 votes from one side of Route 17 and 4,300 from the other side of Route 17. Upon taking the oath of office, I pledge to represent all my citizens, those who voted for me, those who did not, and those who stayed home. These two annexation applications were submitted by my constituents. They were fil filed in accordance with New York State law, which allows this annexation process. My public responsibility was to protect that process scrupulously. This I did. I attended every meeting, read every document, spoke with hundreds of citizens, and carefully weighed whether these applications were in the overall public interest. The larger annexation needed more analysis, and I could not support it. The smaller application for annexation included six areas surrounded on three sides by the village of Kirish Joel, and on the fourth side by the town of Woodbury. Each of these fingers is zoned URM. From the 163.8 acres, please subtract approximately 40 acres for Cornet Lake and other various uh, parcels that will not be developed. This is not the end of life in Orange County as we know it. My decision looked at how annexation would affect my constituents in the village of Kirish Joel who need a place for their families to live. I also listened to my constituents who live outside of the KJ. They value open area and a single lot house and a large lot. My decision was against the total 507 acres and in favor of 163.8. That was not a question of compromising or trying to please everyone. My responsibility was to read all reports. Most valuable was the independent 98-page analysis prepared by, for the county by Kent Gardner of CGR and the Chasson Group. Also valuable were the questions raised by Town Commission John Meyer Consulting and the answers to those questions provided by Tim Miller Associates. These studies looked at the impact of the growth of Kiris Joel, especially water and sewer needs. From these and other presentations from which my citizens told me, from my own experiences and whatever good sense I have left, I had to decide what was in the best public interest for all, and that is what I did. The chance for the leadership to resolve this with the interested party sitting around a table, 
That opportunity passed a year ago. Now it will be determined by the New York State Judiciary. Thank you for your close attention and thank you for your public service. Thank you. Next, next speaker is Donna Siebel from Woodbury. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tough act to follow that. Uh, I'd like to uh, submit this to you, whoever I would. This is a copy of, uh, of the sign that uh, Mrs. Maloney spoke about. She forgot to give it to you. Does anybody take that? Okay. Uh, there isn't too much to say in detail because I think it's all been said, but the, my feeling is when you're in a battle, you can't put a price tag on a battle. You don't know how long the battle's going to last. It's just, we're in a war for the survival of Orange County, of all the communities, not just a specific community. But you people need to make this decision, and I know there's dollars and cents involved, but you need to look at each other, and you need to look at your, grand, your children and your grandchildren and say, this is the legacy that I'm going to leave for Orange County, to my community. It's just, it's, you, you have a tough decision. And there are people who live in Central Valley that have beautiful homes, but they support high density right next to them. I'll leave you at that, Mr. Amo. Thank you. Russ Castle, <laughs> support for legal action. That's what's on the. That was just my subject. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. In this room, you are joined by the overall community, the community that each and every one of you and your families belong to. The good, insular people of KJ do not belong to this community and for cultural reasons do not have any interest in interacting with this community except their leaders who game the legal system which in effect harms all of us. How can a community that does not take part in our all-encompassing community decide what can be taken from us? This is not limited to our environment for which generations of folks created zoning to preserve and reasonably grow. Our school systems, which are the backbone of the lives and careers self-created by all of us. Our property values, which for most of us are our biggest lifetime investments. And our elected officials, which in the case of the majority of the town board of Monroe, treats its citizens in the overall community with arrogance, audacity, disrespect, condescension, and blatant rudeness. In a toxic environment, when we, those citizens, are offered one man's privilege of the floor. One consequence of the block vote of KJ, in my opinion, is that it appears that our supervisor is purposely and systematically bankrupting the town with his constant frivolous spending on items big and small that we, the townspeople, have no say over. The Monroe Woodbury School District, again, through its due diligence and responsibility, came in under the 2% budget cap this year, yeah. thus affording all of the citizens who reside in that district New York State tax relief. The Mon um, uh, this will certainly not happen with the town property tax. It did not happen last year as well, due to the consequence of the block vote. As elected officials, you have taken a sworn oath to represent all the citizens of your districts. If you wish to get reelected, it is imperative that you reach out to the entire community to educate and inform as to what is going on above politics that will affect everyone's everyday lives. Why is it that all county judges recuse themselves whenever KJ litigation comes to court, citing block vote conflict of interest, and yet in such an important vote as to grant or not grant these annexation petitions, no block vote elected Monroe Town Board member had the propriety to recuse themselves? There is no question that this annexation with a vast majority of overwhelmingly negative professional studies is not in the overall public interest. It is not in the interest of the overall community to which you all belong. I urge you to help us, along with all the other supporting Orange County municipalities, in finding a legal way to overturn this decision by approving the funding for it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Michael Sussman, Thank you. Good 
evening. The simplest position to take today is one of opposition to annexation. I understand the instincts of those who oppose the annexation and, too, would like to see open space preserved. But I submit this debate is about a deeper issue and one which our leaders have never faced. The fundamental issue here is whether a religious group can create a village based on their religion, effectively exclude others, run that village in a patently undemocratic manner, seek then to expand their territory because their religious custom is to promote larger families and they have limited space in their current area. I have twice tried without your support and without success to have the village of Curious Joel declared unconstitutional because its very creation mocks the separation of church and state so dear to our founders. Neither case I brought was decided on the merits, rather on strained procedural grounds by federal judges who frankly evaded the issues. Failing to oppose this expansion now will simply allow what I regard as a constitutional lawyer, as an unconstitutional village to grow. This makes no sense. Residents of Curious Joel who want to live elsewhere should have that right. This is basic to the 14th Amendment and ensured by our Fair Housing Act, federal and state. But they need not live in communities they politically dominate or control based on religion. As a county, we should not permit the growth of a village organized around a specific religion, whatever that religion, when it excludes others from participation in residency and even excludes those Satmars who do not follow the majority. In my view, the growth of this kind of village constitutes the most basic assault on the cherished separation of church and state. For that reason, I believe the legislature should use whatever means are available to challenge it. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, as a resident of Monroe and Orange County for over 30 years, I ask you to approve the funding requested by County Executive Newhouse. Uh, many speakers have spoken to the terribly dysfunctional government of the town of Monroe, <laughs> as well as its unholy subservience to the religious village of Curious Jaw. I'm going to take a slightly different tack because background is uh, been covered well, and I'm sure it'll be covered some more. And I'm just going to ask you to look at the facts, just completely look at the facts, nothing else. You know, annexation is a very uh, regulated process in this state, right? Goes through the steps, and a record is built, a factual record. And this 20-month uh, proceeding has created quite a detailed factual record, far beyond the norm. And that record demonstrates beyond a shadow of a doubt that the annotation petitions and Curious Joel's seeker environmental review were grossly deficient. Grossly deficient. And I know Mr. Burke well. I've invited to him, him in the past to have a conversation about this, a non-emotional one. We haven't done it yet. I look forward to doing it one day because I cannot fathom how the man could stand here and tell you he read everything and then vote yes. I guarantee you, if you read the record, you have no choice but to vote no. Because it is gross, it, it, it all points to the record, to the documents being grossly deficient. And as a result, the petitions and the seeker study should have been roundly rejected and the annexations determined not to be in the public interest. For instance, 27 land use professionals, municipalities, environmental organizations commented, wrote expert reports on the environmental review and the petitions. Unanimously, unanimously, they rejected them. What does that tell you? 
They're not, they're not in Monroe. They're not citizens of Monroe. Uh, they're from outside it. The county's own planning department wrote, uh, I think it's a 19-page indictment of both the draft and the final review. The town of Monroe's own consultant, what Dan didn't tell you when he was up here, the town of Monroe's own consultant told them they can't go forward to reject it. <laughs> that needed supplementary information was needed. And there were two studies. There was one for the uh, annexation. Dan referred to the 500 being too much, the 164 being, okay, guess what? There was one environmental study, not two. You reject one, you reject both. Uh, Monroe and the nearby towns will suffer the most significant harm should this annexation proceed. But make no mistake, all of Orange County will be burdened by the significant expenses of new, new sewer facilities, road improvements, welfare costs, as well as the many multiple other adverse effects, including those on traffic, property values, water, and other natural resources. This is a tipping point for Orange County. Please vote to stop the KJ steamroller and move the, the matter to court for review. Thank you. Matthew Higgins. I want to thank you all for hearing us out. I was going to try to make up a speech for you, but I didn't have enough time, so here goes. Right now, I live in Woodbury, and Woodbury has a pipeline coming through it, and this pipeline, there's no permit for this pipeline for the water to come from New York City. So my thought is, how could you allow them to have this annexation without the water. The other thing is, they want 612,000 gallons out of the Mountainville Wells. I'm sure you've read the reports. Well, Woodbury's going to be taking out 200,000 gallons a day. They've already been permitted for at least 200, I think. And you have Highland Stone there, and they're able to use, I think, uh, well, 350,000 gallons per day for their mind-to-watering operation. That's a lot of water. Now, the Woodbury Creek is a trout spawning creek. Or, that's how it's rated. And the people in Cornwall, they rely on that water. So does Woodbury. So with KJ, if they're able to put that pipeline down the state highway and across the county road. What I'd like you all to do is vote for the lawsuit and stick with it in the interest of justice and liberty for others in Orange County. Aside from that, what should we call it? I think it's a cult. The cult of Georgia. It's time that this county stepped up. And I hope that you do. I really hope you do. Because all you sitting here that don't vote for it, I'm sure you're going to find a problem with your voters. Because people are for this. Maybe one community is against this, but everybody in this county doesn't want to see this happen. There's no sewer. There's no sewer capacity. There's people that are, their wells are getting tapped out in Woodbury and in Cornwall and in Mountainville, there's hardly any water. Ants could walk across the Woodbury Creek this summer. There's no water left. Woodbury hasn't even put their wells into effect yet. They haven't tapped it, but there's no water. So I'd like you to use your police power as Orange County. I'd like you to use the Sheriff's Department because you're allowed to use the Sheriff's Department to stop illegal activities that KJ is doing right now. Because it doesn't happen. And if you don't do it, no one will. They're not abiding by the environmental conservation laws with their annexation. Thank you.
Speaker Brown, and Connolly from the role regarding the amortization. Uh, I would like to thank the chairman and the county legislators for allowing um, us, the public, to address, you, to address all of you and listening to the concerns of the people. I'd like to echo the sentiments of legislator Agnostakis, who stated on Tuesday, Monroe citizens have been left in the dark by our government. But I'd also like to add to that sentiment, we have been treated with utter and shameful disrespect, all led by Supervisor Carly Jones. fresh air to be able to address elected officials without being interrupted, without being called a bigot, and without being bullied because our opinions may differ. But this is what I'm hoping for today, is that our opinions today do not differ. That our opinions today are for yes to vote, to seek independent counsel, to seek litigation against this annexation either independently or in conjunction with the other municipalities. The, um, sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> um, that you, unlike the Monroe Town Board, will listen to the other 27 independent professionals, including CGR, who was hired by this very body. I read the report that is located on the county's website that was conducted by CGR. And here are the many adjectives that obviously Mr. Burke didn't pick up on, used by them to describe the KJFGEIS. They include insufficient, arbitrary, capricious, and my favorite, grossly inadequate picture of the actual impact, and Mr. Burke write this one down, of both annexations. You have but no other choice but to vote yes to litigate on, on, on these annexations. It is your job to, con to grossly and adequately find the job that Tim Miller and Associates did on behalf of the village of KJ to be ridiculous. I mean, there's so many other, so many factory evidence that has been presented by separate bodies that support that this annexation, both annexations, are no good. This is not a time to stand by politics, but a time for this legislative body to stand by the people of Orange County. Please vote yes. I'm a little nervous, but um, I lived in Monroe for 35 years, and I moved here when I was 12 years old. I moved to Monroe when I was 12 years old, and I love the area where I live, and I'm living in the home that I grew up in. My mom passed away about a year ago. And I have two children who go to Monroe Woodbury. And it's a fantastic school district. I attended it, I graduated it, and it's just phenomenal. And I would like the school district to, you know, remain the same. Um, and Monroe is a beautiful town and the surrounding areas in Orange County. And, and I just love all the land and, you know, I don't want to see it taken. It breaks my heart, because, you know, when you grow up here, you see all this happening, you know, for the past couple of years or whenever. It breaks my heart, because I want to, I mean, you know, my children are going to grow up here. And I'm against the annexation, and I'm, yes, for the going to court. Okay? Thank you for letting me speak today. Uh, my name is Ananda Snell and I live in the town of Chester. My children will attend the Monroe Woodbury School District. But being within the school district and not part of the town of Monroe makes this 
part of a large and frustrated demographic, as we can't vote in the town elections, but we are so affected by the results. We have two young sons, and when we bought our home two years ago, three months before the annexation petition, our hope was to stay here and raise them until they completed college in Vietnam. Now, one term I hear over and over is discrimination. 28 years ago, my parents moved us up from um, Muncie in Rockland. Maybe you've heard of it. Our family, with three young children, was kicked out of their apartment and told outsiders weren't welcome. Prior to that, I played with Hasidic and Orthodox children. My parents raised us to be accepting and open-minded of other religions and cultures, despite the discrimination they faced back then. And not a word of this was told to me until I was an adult. We moved to Middletown where I received a great education in a diverse community, and from there I went to college in Albany. After I was married, my husband and I settled back in Orange County. He's not from here, but thought it had so much to offer. Monroe is the perfect location for us, for the many reasons other commuters into New York City feel. The village of KJ didn't bother us. My husband grew up next to Teaneck in New Jersey, so it wasn't not anything new. We see diversity as a positive in our children's lives, as it had been in ours. Not more than two weeks ago, I took my sons to the airplane park in Monroe. A Hasidic mother with two young girls was by the swings. And when my one and a half year old son wanted to be on the empty baby swing next to her, I didn't hesitate. After he smiled and waved as he does to everyone, I was glad to see he sees no difference as I did as a child. But quickly, the mother told her daughter to look away, breaking the eye contact between our children with her hand, asking her daughter to look straight forward. Is that not discrimination? Mm -hmm. If I did that, would I not be called anti-Semitic? It goes both ways, yet religion and therefore discrimination has nothing to do with why this annexation is wrong. This past week, a Hasidic mother at the Monroe Post Office actually turned her daughter's stroller toward my son so they could wave, and it brought tears to my eyes. I was so thankful, because that's how I want my children to be raised. It served as a good reminder not to judge everybody based on the actions of a few. And keep in mind, there are so many people in KJ against this annexation, and they can't speak up for fear of retaliation. I know Muncie is unrecognizable from what it was 30 years ago when I lived there. What will the next 30 years bring for Monroe and all of Orange County? Will history repeat itself for a third generation of my family? Will my children want to live here in 30 years? Will you and your children want to live here in 30 years? An annexation is not the answer. Everybody knows it's not in the public interest. A true long-term solution does need to be made, but for the entire county. We're depending on you, and please don't let the poorly run town board of Monroe get away with this. Final speaker, County Executive Newhouse. Members of the legislature, uh, what was that? Is it like a, a, a baking thing? Uh, um, the, I was asked by the legislative chairman to give an update on why are we here, what's the status, and what are we talking about today. So uh, I speak quickly. If I go too fast, uh, let me know. Um, I'm still in shock over talking to Mike Sussman that we actually agree on something, uh, and he was him and I both laughed at it. So, so the one thing is why Sue. Uh, so the first part of that is, is to complete the secret that was not properly done. And uh, if you look at the county the, and the county planners in the back, we submitted our, uh, our statements back to the village of Pearsall and the town of Monroe before they voted on this. And there's a 19-page document, but it's all summed up in the first page. It says, we find that there are gross deficiencies in the FGEIS concerning environmental, fiscal, and social impact analysis of the annexations. So that's number one. We're, we're suing on things that we've asked to be addressed that were never addressed. This is our duty. So the second thing is um, 
The process is with two parties. You have the town of Monroe and you have the village of Kirsterwell. They're, just like many, I think about a third of you of prior town board or council members or village, you've done this before. As, as legislators, you've done this as well. You get information from your professionals and you vote and make your decision based on that. The town of Monroe's own independent consultant said, this DGEIS is not complete, do not support this. How many times, Steve, you're a mayor, and I know we're on the same side of this, but how many times? I've, I was a town councilman in a Chester and, and a supervisor in Chester for 10 years. When do you grossly ignore your independent professionals on this? How does that happen? So, the third part of that is the cost of not doing something. Because I know the other day everybody was saying, how much is it going to cost us? The cost of not doing anything now is going to be you look at the impacts of this, if we let this go, this is our time. There is no other time. There is no other team out there. There is no other team out there that has a better, a, a, a better, in my opinion, standing than the county. I've been talking to, uh, and I'll get into that with the coalition in a little bit, but just what the impacts are of not doing anything. Today, the village of Kirschwell uses 17% of our sewer treatment plant in Harriman. The report said in just a few decades, there'll be over 52%. So let's just keep going through here. Um, the diversity, I mean, the density in, in the uh, 164, and I'll, I'm, that's not even talking about the 507. The 164, if it was developed full out today, I think it's a miracle, but these numbers say over 461 possible units. With this annexation, It'll be over five times that. So why is that important to the, to the, to the, to the, to the Orange County? It could be more, right? But why is this important to Orange County? Because this whole property is in Orange County Sewer District 1. I know it very well because I'm in Chester. So we as a county have to provide sewer to everybody in that district, whether they're getting sewer today. There's also people that aren't getting sewer today that are paying for the opportunity to get sewer in the future. So we could foresee, let's say right now, 461 units. How do we, with a sewer plant with that is at or almost uh, at capacity, say all the other people that are paying, we're going to forget you guys and we're going to add more capacity to a plant that's already at capacity? These are serious issues. This is where we need to be on our A-game. So I'm going to keep going. So the other thing is why outside counsel? We talked about conflicts of interest. The reason why we have outside counsel, a couple of things. Number one, there's legal conflicts or optical conflicts, just things that just don't look good. The, the appearance itself to the public is not palatable. Town of Woodbury's law firm, one of their partners is an elected official in the town of Monroe. The Cornwall and the Hudson, their uh, attorney, one of their law firm is also made up of an elected official from the town of Monroe. These are all things you don't want in a lawsuit. Village of Monroe's law firm also for four years represented the town board in Monroe. Uh, Village of Harriman's, uh, their attorney, I'm not saying, I'm not beating up these attorneys. It just does a lot of stuff in there. You want to get some on the outside. The town of Blooming Grove's current law firm that represents the town of Blooming Grove is the same law firm that represents the Village of Kirishwa. So how do you go and say, I need you to sue these guys, and that those, those guys are the guys that also work for them. So these are the re these are the, that's some of the reasons. The other thing is the, the lawsuit itself is so huge you're in a large document, this isn't a small claims thing, and you have less than 30 days of when they voted to put it together. So that is why we're looking at a high-powered outside firm has no conflicts of interest and specializes in this type of action. That's why this is important. Now, the amount... The, the reason why I'm here before you today is that it's special counsel, so that's why I'm before the legislature, and I know you guys probably know this better than I do. Um, so the amount and the terms, uh, you know, that's something to be determined, but I'm here to get the approval for funding to get outside counsel. So the third thing is this coalition. I call them the coalition. I don't know what they'll be dubbed later. So I know the mayor, Aaron, doesn't mind if I call you that. But these are the people in the original eight, and I say original eight because I think there's going to be more. The Village of Monroe, the Village of South, I mean, yeah, Village of Monroe, Village of South Blooming Grove, Town of Blooming Grove, Town of Cornwall, Village of Cornwall and the Hudson, Town of Woodbury, Village of Woodbury and the Village of Harriman. Since Tuesday's meeting, I got a call from the CEOs of five other towns and many other, but I only got the five that I confirmed and spoke to today on the phone that said, do this. So I'll give you, give you the five. So 
the town of Deer Park, the town of Wayweyanda, way far away, town of Tuxedo, town of Chester, the supervisor, Alex Jameson, my deputy for many years is here, um, and, uh, and the town of Crawford. So with that, I also, I also bought with me earlier this year when we went to do this, and I'm, not, I'm with you 100%. We're taking responsibility here. I get this. I'm just giving you the basis of why we're here. We did the independent study. The Association of Town Supervisors and Mayors that represents every community in Orange County voted unanimously at my request in May, I think Jimmy Purcell was the speaker to introduce it for us, in May, uh, May 26, actually I got stuff for, uh, I think Mayor, you made the motion too, uh, I think he seconded it, uh, unanimously supporting the county on this. Subsequently, this, this same association um, voted on two other pieces of legislation for the county. Uh, one of them was to support some type of state uh, intervention to get us to be lead agency, which we saw what happened with that. Mm -hmm. The other thing they asked for was to put flow meters in the, on all the pipes going into the Harriman treatment plant. God, go figure, they're not on there. They're being put in now. That's one of the things I put in, uh, asked for when I was county executive. So now you could, I mean, you, uh, you can know how much sewer is coming from each community. Up to now, a third were estimated, uh, over a third of the pipes coming in, they were all going by estimation. So this is the right thing to do. So we have an opportunity here, and I've grown up here. I went to Monroe Bay. You guys know my story. My family's from Monroe. My, my, they still live there predominantly now. We need to go from past experience, okay? So I heard a count, the former county legislative chairman beat the heck out of a bunch of you the other day and beat, beat the heck out of the county saying, why are you getting involved? This is the reason why we're in this mess. The decades of kicking the can down the road, and it's good if you have a house outside of this county. We, we, every community in Orange County, from Middletown, every one of us, whether, we, whether they're Republican or Democrat or anywhere in between, Middletown, they answer what's called the 239 review. Any application that comes before their planning board that requires an ex extra look-see, they send it to the county planning office, county planning office comments back on it, and you need a super majority to go over it. It's common practice, it's obeying the law. There's one community in Orange County that doesn't obey that. That's part of this process. And we, 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 were, um, we were promised by the DEC commissioner, who I hear now is retired, um, that we were gonna see a fair and transparent process. Let me tell you about fair and transparent, tra transparent process. Last winter, when we had literally the worst day, as the incident commander, the top guy in the county for major emergencies, and Walt in the back of the room, I'm getting emails from him that we have a major snowstorm, not 20% chance, not 30% chance, or 80% chance of snow or sleet, 100% chance of one of the worst nights of the year to have a public meeting. Now, every one of you have had bad meetings. I've been to them here. People are upset, people are happy, you face the music. That's our job as elected officials. You don't continue to have it to try to minimize public comment. And that's where Mr. Burke, the town of Monroe, and I'm not trying to beat you up, but Harley Bowles beats me up and said, why didn't you do anything? He's part of the other party. He should have called a special meeting and refused to go. But the other meeting, the other meeting from the legislature, from, you, from, the, from, the, uh, from this, and I'm going to comment and compliment the legislature, was the last vote on this. It was done on Sunday of Labor Day weekend. Who does that? So. The legislature, to your credit, and, and we had a meeting on this the other day. Everybody wanted us to decide this one way or another the other day. But you did it to accommodate people. And that's what we do when we do the right thing of government here. So what I'm telling to you as your county executive and your partner in this, I don't like the law. I don't like to sue. You know that. I've criticized all these lawsuits that don't go anywhere. The permit that everybody was talking about, the water permit, parking cars and, st and, and strapping yourselves, and I know I get criticized for that, that's not the way to do government. Guess what? I just didn't give the permit out again. It expired, the pipe wasn't built properly, they don't get it until it's done properly. That you, you act by the law like everybody else does. So uh, that, that is the problem that we have here. It's, it's a pattern of ignoring the process and ignoring the law. And that's what we have here. We, we, we put in over 12 complaints or major ma major pages, but 12 major concerns that we had. I voiced a couple of them. Sewer, water. The study says that if the water is utilized from the wells, it will drain the, the Moodna Creek dry in summer months. All these things are supposed to be 
answered in depth. And I'll tell you, I think, you know when you're right, guys, when their own consultants say that you can't do this. And that's what we're doing here. Uh, I said it wasn't in the best interest for the county to, to allow this to happen. I've said this many times. Uh, there was many opportunities. The document that was submitted on our behalf that, it, that went through all these items that we said were still not answered, and they still voted on it. And one last thing I have to say, because you, we're, this, this should come up in a discussion. The 507 isn't dead because one party voted yes or no. I know this. Alex, you can ask him for an hour or two in the back, because we have the same problem in Chester. One group says yes, the town says yes, the village says no. Guess what it is? It's a flip of a coin in front of a judge to decide. So we have the most at risk here. The other one that's not in the room that should be, maybe they are here, is Mother Woodbury School District, but hopefully they come down the road. Uh, but there's a lot of issues that aren't answered. They have to be done the right way. So I ask you, reluctantly to spend money, but it's something that's well spent now because you're going to spend a lot more down the road. And I will stay here for more questions. Thank you. Sorry. Well, you know the rules. You've spoken here many times. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well played. Would the court please read the notice of special meeting? No. <laughs> notice to reconvene special meeting to the members of the Orange County Legislature. Notice is hereby given pursuant to Article 2, Section C4 of the Legislative Manual that a special meeting of the Orange County Legislature is hereby called when Thursday, September 17, 2015 at 4 p.m., where Emergency Services Building Auditorium, 22 Wells Farm Road, Goshen, New York. Purpose, one, resolution authorizing the retention of outside counsel to provide legal advice and to represent the County of Orange in litigation in connection with the environmental review and petitions for the annexation of lands from the town of Monroe to the village of Kears Joel, 200,000. Two, resolution authorizing the retention of outside counsel to provide legal advice and to represent the County of Orange in litigation in connection with the environmental review and petitions for the annexation of lands from the town of Monroe to the village of Kears Joel, 250,000. The chairman will re reconvene the special meeting which recessed on Tuesday, September 15, 2015 at the Emergency Services Building to consider the proposed resolutions. No further business will be considered. Okay, I'm going to need motions for the resolutions to make it on the agenda for consent. Uh, Kevin, would you make the motion for your resolution? I will. For a second? Second. Myrna seconds. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Carried. Okay, now the other res resolution, which is the original resolution we discussed. Uh, can I get a motion to put that on? A motion for that one? For the one we discussed originally, the 250000 the other day? Okay, Melissa makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Um, what point of order? Um, opposed? I, I object. I object to that motion. And I think uh, when there's an objection, there should be debate followed by a vote that will not include the chairman in that vote. Am I right with that, uh, Madam Lawyer? What is your point of order? I'm, I'm not okay, is this coming on by consent? Mm -hmm. It is. It has to, if, if it comes on by consent, if there's anyone that objects to it, then, then, then we take a roll call. You take a roll call. There is there a debate before yes. that roll call? Yes. Per, per, each person can speak one time. Correct. And then the chairman does not vote in that roll call. No, he does roll. He, he does, does vote in it. Yes. Okay, fair enough. Um, so I object, and um, right. you object to the, the second one. The first exactly. one's on already. And the first one's on. I object to the second one because of the clause that that second one is appropriating two hundred fifty thousand. And the third resolve from the bottom says that the county executive, in conjunction with the office of the county attorney, is hereby authorized to retain outside counsel. I think everyone has spoken loud and clear that they do not want that, so I object to that resolution. They both say that? Excuse me. You need copies. You don't have copies? Oh, I said sorry. <laughs> 
Okay. Which whereas? The last whereas? First resolved. Well, both resolutions say that, Mr. Nagnostakis. So when, the first one is on consent, uh, so you can make an amendment. Uh, I, I understand that. I didn't object to the first one, and when we discuss that one, I'm sure there'll be uh, amendments to that to satisfy me. I object to the second one on the grounds that I just stated. Okay, thank you. So what are we doing? We're going to put the second one on there? Voting on the second yeah. I mean, we can hold it off and see how we make out with the first one. Do you want to hold off on it? I'll be happy to do that. Okay? We can bring it up later if the first one doesn't pass. Okay, let's do that. Let's talk about Kevin's yeah, resolution that he I'm made the other day. Yes, Roseanne. Go ahead. We're, we just received a different resolution. There's two resolutions here on our tables. And I was wondering, since we just received the, the new one, could you please explain exactly the difference between the two? Okay, the first one uh, that you have before you, the resolve, is uh, different um, in that this uh, was a discussion that legislators had uh, an executive uh, session with respect to uh, uh, hiring outside counsel. And so it was suggested uh, that it would be for uh, that money to be appropriated in an amount not to exceed 50% of the litigation costs should the county decide to join the litigation with other municipalities, but in no event shall such amount exceed 200000 dollars which is herewith appropriated for such purpose as indicated below. So this this uh, this resolution uh, provides for uh, an appropriation of two hundred thousand uh, dollars. If the county decides to join with the other municipalities in uh, the litigation then it would be capped at fifty percent of the total litigation costs um, but in no event above two hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. That, and, and the second one is just the, the same resolution that we had the other day. Okay. Correct. Okay. No, we're not going to, we don't need to do anything with the second one. Let's, we're gonna, let's speak to the first one. Okay. Yeah, it has a motion to put it on. The first one. The second one, we're not going to. We can bring it on, Michael. Okay. We're withdrawing. We didn't vote on it, so. I'm sorry? We're just a point of order. Do, do we have to withdraw the motion to make in the second in order to move on? That was all. It wasn't objected. Oh, no problem. We didn't act on it anyway, so we can always bring it back. Okay, so do we need another motion now that it's on the consent or no? Or I'll have her, I'll have a, uh, Jean read the resolution, correct? Number one, the one that Kevin made the other day. Resolution authorized the retention of outside counsel to provide legal advice and to represent the County of Orange in connection with environmental review and petitions for the annexation of lands from the town of Monroe to the village of Curious Joel. Discussion. Yes, Legislator Nagnostakis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. What a surprise that I'm leading off, huh? Um, <laughs> all right. So, if I understand correctly, uh, a point, again, I want to just make sure we're clear on this point of information. Um, we have a resolution in front of us that we're going to retain counsel to potentially join with the uh, coalition, I think it was called, and uh, spend up to 50% um, of the total amount not to exceed 200,000. Basically, this is the resolution we have in front of us? Okay, thank you. So that's what we have in front of us today. Um, about a week ago, we had a board in Monroe vote four to one to approve an annexation of 164 acres. One of the members of that board uh, was quoted in the local media as saying, 
um, he called the decision a compromise that would work for everybody. I don't think a lot of people that live in that area consider that to be a compromise. The village of Curious Joel, I don't believe, believes it to be a compromise either. In, again, the local paper, the manager of the village uh, said that they expect to appeal the rejection of the 507 acres to bring it to the appellate division of the state Supreme Court and suggested that might be the best place to resolve the matter. He was quoted as saying, we, quote, we believe that some of the issues must be decided by the judicial branch of government. So clearly, they didn't believe it was a compromise that they can live with either. Now, what we have is an annexation that actually is going to be, I believe, a precedent will be set that will be monumental for this county. And I think what we have in front of us is not, the key numbers here are not, in my opinion, the 164 or the 507. What I will do is refer to a document that I printed out that was produced on January 14, 2014. It's a map produced by AFR Engineering and Land Surveying that has offices on 110 Stage Road in Monroe and 30 Madison Avenue, Paramus. They produced a map that is entitled, their title on the map was Map of Hasidic Jewish Land Owners Surrounding Curious Joel Within the Towns of Monroe, Woodbury, and Blooming Grove. And their bottom of the page concludes that those Hasidic landowners own 3,300 acres. So I believe 3,300 is the key number, not 164 or 507. Now, I make no judgment at all about these landowners. I make no judgment whether it's good or bad. I just bring this up as a fact. I don't know what the outcome of the litigation is going to produce. I have no idea what happens when you go into court, what the result will be. But I do know two things. I'm sure that ultimately, everyone needs to follow the same laws. And I also know, ultimately, everyone needs to live together peacefully in Orange County. I believe that the only way to ensure those two outcomes is through the judicial system. The judicial system is the last best hope for a fair outcome for all involved. And I hope every one of my colleagues, every one of my colleagues, regardless of how they feel about the annexation, vote for the money for this to proceed to the judicial system. Before I give up the floor, what I want to do on the third resolved from the bottom, where it says resolved that the county executive, in conjunction with the office of the county attorney, I would like to make a motion to change that and replace those words with county legislature. And, and before I get a second on that, on the second to last resolved, where it says that the budget for the Department of Law is hereby supplemented. I want to replace the words Department of Law, and I believe in our budget book it's legislative body. And if that's not correct, county legislature. But I think, uh, Madam Attorney, legislative body is the appropriate phrase. So basically I want Department of Law replaced with legislative body. And I would hope someone would make a mo uh, second on my motions. Okay.
Thank you. Sure, you don't want to do that and maybe change it to the county legislative attorney. I mean, we don't normally get involved. I'll take input on this. Uh, thank you. Uh, originally, uh, when you look through the charter, uh, the powers to retain legal counsel is vested uh, with the county uh, county attorney. And in this particular matter... Uh, uh, point of information, I I'm going to interrupt you. I I I'm sure you're going to give me perfectly correct advice, but I know for a fact that this legislative body has done this before when we personally retained lawyers to sue the county executive a few years ago. We did this exact same thing. I, I did not say that you didn't have the authority. Uh, what I'm saying is that under the charter, the power to, re uh, to retain outside counsel is vested with the county attorney. Um, now, the way this was structured, just so everyone knows, is that uh, the uh, in the county attorney's office, uh, the deputy county attorney, uh, Sharon Worthy Spiegel, who I think is here today, um, has been taking the lead on this matter, and she has been uh, the liaison on behalf of the County of Orange uh, for the county executive as well as for the legislative legislative body, uh, working with me in coordinating efforts with the coalition of municipalities uh, who uh, have already approved uh, and signed an IMA uh, to uh, hire uh, a law firm, uh, Brian Cave, uh, from New York City. Um, so uh, that was structured in coordination with the efforts of the uh, local municipalities. Uh, I have um, personally spoken with the county attorney uh, and I would say this was two weeks ago. Um, he had no problems uh, with uh, allowing the county executive as well as the uh, chairman of the legislature uh, to uh, work with, uh, with Sharon in uh, working with the outside uh, municipalities in uh, retaining outside counsel. That's if we join the coalition, which has not been decided yet. I think it's the hope and the expectation that we will do that. Um, but of course, that's that's a negotiate. That's something that still has to be negotiated. Um, so uh, we can do that. I think if you change the language uh, to say the the county legislature, that will just delay the process because we will then have to convene. Uh, we will have to interview uh, the uh, the council. Um, and we would have to, um, one, uh, do a uh, request for proposals. We would have to then interview firms, and then you'd have to deliberate, uh, and then once again reconvene. Um, so that will take a couple of weeks to do that. Even if you fast-tracked it, which we've done in the past, trying to fast-track things, um, you're talking about a good two weeks. Uh, that's fast-tracking. Uh, in government here. So uh, I, I just put that out there. Um, if you want the monies uh, uh, here in the, in, the, uh, in the legislative body in our budget, uh, the bills would be coming to, um, the, the way it was structured is that the bills are submitted, um, if we join the coalition, the bills are submitted uh, to um, one of the clerks for one of the municipalities. Um, and then they're sent uh, to, uh, I believe, the other uh, municipalities for review, uh, and then uh, they, are, they are paid. We haven't really set up the structure yet here in the county as far as paying those bills uh, for outside councils if we join the, uh, the, uh, the coalition. Uh, so we could do it, but it, it involves yet a, another step. Uh, so it's possible, but and it makes I, it a bit more cumbersome. And I ask and a I question think maybe to, to clarify, yeah. maybe I'll change my motion. Uh, the way I understand now, the county executive and the office of the uh, county attorney are the ones that are set up to do the negotiating with that coalition, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And I would like to, be, only because of the concerns I heard from the citizens, I would like to replace that with, if the county deputy attorney is the one doing it, why couldn't our legislative attorney be the one doing it instead? Could you do it instead? Well, under the Orange County Charter, I do, have, do not have the authority to commence litigation on behalf of the County of Orange. It is the, the law department. Now, uh, I have been working uh, in cooperation with Sharon um, on, on this. Um, she is taking the lead, uh, and uh, she has been very intimately involved uh, with this. Uh, I respect, I have a great respect uh, for uh, 
Ms. Uh, Sharon Worthy Spiegel. Uh, she's uh, done a stellar job so far uh, on this. Um, she's well respected by all of the uh, attorneys representing the municipalities. Um, I would have no problems working with her on this. Um, we've been talking, uh, how many hours, Sharon, on this uh, for the last couple of weeks? Um, so I'm kept apprised of it. But you would but have no problem cooperating fully with her to make correct. sure the process went through? Correct. Um, I, will, I will withdraw my motion if the seconder withdraws also. I just, yeah, give me one second, Curly. Yeah, I just want to say that I concur with Aunt that. I mean, they've both been handling it. And if we do join eight municipalities or even a few more in the coalition, uh, they're going to be using the outside council. So that, and we, we know the tenets of what we're going to litigate over. So it's, uh, you know, I can, I can appreciate everybody's concern here. And, and Mr. Chapman is staying outside of the, the picture in this. and Sharon are very involved and they've been met with the coalition. The co coalition has already advanced. Uh, you know, we're behind, so, okay. Um, Myrn, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you first, but I get CRS, but if you raised your hand, I would have remembered. I would have put you ahead of Michael, so go ahead. Orange County must go to law, go to court against the lead agency, Curious Joel, in the matter of its insufficient FEIS report and lack of responses to Orange County's request to supply very specific additional data and an appropriate build-out scenario applicable for 20 years. It's the process as well as the content that the county must defend because when one municipality in the county puts itself outside of due process required by law, then the county and all of the other municipalities within it, the hamlets, villages and towns, we, all of us, have a real problem. Kira Shalil shirked its responsibility for clarifying its previously submitted DEIS as requested by Orange County in many cited places within that submitted document. There are substantial areas of deficiency still present in the village of Kira Shalil's final generic environmental impact statement, which was submitted as the lead agent by the lead agency in its own annexation proposal. When Kiris Joel or any other municipality takes it upon itself to disengage and disrespect legally stated concerns of the County of Orange, in that the county is acting for itself and the good of all of its municipalities by requesting information in perfectly laid out areas of concerns and expected responses, then that single municipality is sending a message to all the other hamlets, villages, and towns in the County of Orange that leads to the interpretation that the municipality believes and will act accordingly only for its own needs. In Kiris Joel's environmental impact study workup, the expanding village plan relies upon Orange County playing a central role in it with a facility that the county owns. I would like to refer to Justia and the review of a 2005 court case called In the Matter of the Application of the County of Orange Petitioner in a Proceeding under Article 78 of the Civil Practice Law and Rules against Vir Village of Kiris Joel and the Board of Trustees of the Village of Kiris Joel Respondents. In that court case of 10 years ago, the same intrinsic piece requiring county action with what the county owns justified the county with standing then, standing, and applies again today in the workings of this present annexation. Presuming to manipulate the county into an annexation complicity is egregious. Acting only for its own good and possibly suppressing vital build-out information in its final environmental report Kiris Joel could be viewed as engaging in an act of cover-up. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Possible negative outcomes, even environmental damages. If left unchallenged, such reporting behavior may be precedent for future annexations when Kiris Joel's leaders decide that the village again needs more room for its expanding population and seeks land from other towns in the county. This Orange County Legislature must now authorize the county to take a stand in court 
to ensure that every municipality within it must follow the same rules for annexation and be treated equally. Within Orange County, the defined processes and procedures, the spirit and intent of environmental disclosures and exposures are required by annexation law to guide the county and they must be upheld by us for the good and welfare of all of our municipalities. One is not more equal than another. I read, and I know the document initially presented by Kiris Jarrell was insufficient. I read, and I know our county's response issued was very clear with specifications for additional current app data and other supporting information needed to qualify the Kiris Jarrell environmental impact study as truly a seeker required, quote, hard look, unquote, into the annexation's environmental, fiscal, and social impact. Most importantly lacking was a 20-year projection into the future. The pattern of population expansion and build-out in Kiris Joel and its reoccurring need for more physical services and more human services and more space received from Kiris Joel to us, silence. We are at a precedent-setting moment for this legislature and for the future of Orange County. The county's Department of Planning found that, quote, there are gross deficiencies in the final generic impact statement from Kiris Joel concerning environmental, fiscal, and social impact analysis of each annexation alternative, each one. The Center for Governmental Research of Rochester and their subcontractor, the Chasing Companies of Poughkeepsie, conducted an in-depth study for the county. I am voting to take what I believe to be the most responsible action for Orange County's good and welfare. The path is to join with the village of Monroe, the village of Woodbury, the town of Woodbury, the village of South Blooming Grove, the town of Blooming Grove, the town of Cornwall, the village of Cornwall on Hudson, the village of Harriman, and probably more. We must face the issues of the village of Kiris Joel and the board of trustees of the village of Kiris Joel, and we must face it under an Article 78. I urgently and respectfully request my fellow legislators to do the same and vote with me. This is a heavy lift for Orange County, and Orange County has a lot more at stake than any of the municipalities, surely into the hundreds of millions of dollars if the annexations go through. My fellow legislators, as Benjamin Franklin said, we must indeed all hang together, or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. Together, all the papers will be filed to honor uh, before October 8th. Evan, you were next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just for uh, everybody here and everybody watching, the, the reason that the uh, 
amounts are changing. There, there was actually a method to the madness. There were some legislators that were concerned about the 250,000 when the towns and villages were putting in 25. So we did this uh, as a compromise to uh, put us in at 50%, knowing that the other eight municipalities were in for 25,000 each. That would put the county in at 50% and uh, match the 200 that the towns and villages are putting in. And uh, I hope everybody supports that. Um, I certainly will. And uh, I'm happy to see that other towns are, are, are interested, and, and I hope they're going to put some funds in as well. But even if they're not, it really points out to all of us that how big this, this issue really is, and that it's truly, this annexation is truly not in the best interest of, uh, of the residents. I've, I've never seen an issue with this many towns and villages have come out and said, stop, help, do the right thing. I see it as an issue where, uh, I know in, in Cornwall and Cornwall and Hudson, we, we have big concerns. I, I live in Cornwall, for those of you who don't know that, with uh, respect to the water. Uh, not only do we have wells on Taylor Road that are owned by uh, the village of KJ, but then the wells at the 32, uh, 32 flats, I would call it the Woodbury Cornwall line. There's additional wells there that are now also owned by KJ. And then when you look at the pipeline and you say, well, it was supposed to be one size, now it's another, but the DEC doesn't seem to really bother with that. So then it has to take you to the next issue and say, well, why doesn't the DEC care? They seem to care about everything every other town in Boulder does. Amen. And then, it's, then we read in the paper, then we read in the paper that uh, the governor uh, vetoed Assemblyman Stoof's bill uh, for the price of $250,000. It, that the governor appoints the commission of the DEC. I think you heard the county executive say that. Um, and, and then I wonder, I wonder and I fear how much the price of a federal judge is. Uh, because we don't seem to do well in those courts either. So I see it as a big issue for Orange County. We have water issues in Cornwall and Woodbury. School certainly issues in, in Monroe Woodbury. I, I, I feel for you over there. We have the sewer in Harriman that I know Mayor Welly tells us all the time that uh, the odors are terrible, don't send any more. Uh, then you have the whole sewer district number one uh, issue that the county exec also explained. But then you have traffic issues, infrastructure issues, social services issues, which we all know is, is a hot button. It, it's really what we're talking about is the Orange County budget because it's going to affect it across, across the board. Uh, people have said it. The KJ study is, is, is uh, just the environmental impact study is clearly insufficient. Uh, just to say, uh, we're going to grow, so it doesn't matter, and nothing's going to change. That, that's not an environmental impact study. Um, I agree with uh, former legislator Castro Cohen when he says, if we don't spend the money now, it's going to cost way more later. And, and I'll, I'll close with this. Others, others on this legislative panel, my colleagues, may propose a lesser amount. And, and I'm going to vote no if they propose a lesser amount, because I think we have to have the right lawyers, and I'm trusting the, what I'll call the, the grade eight or uh, towns uh, and villages that have chosen the council, because we as a legislative body had no input in that. I've never met these individuals, but I do trust the supervisors and mayors that, uh, that made that selection, because uh, I, I know they all have their communities in mind when they made that decision. And I actually was at a meeting with them, uh, with Speaker Hasty. I think every one of the mayors and supervisors were there, and I heard uh, their concerns, and, and I, I respected every one of them. They were all right on the issues. Um, so I, I'll vote no if it, somebody proposes a lesser amount. It doesn't mean I don't support this. It means that I want to support it properly. So if you, hear lesser, if you hear lesser amounts and I vote no, it doesn't mean I don't support this. I'm fully on board with respect to this litigation, and I think we need the necessary assets to do it properly because uh, we know the assets are going to be on the other side. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> what I'd like to say is that what came out of that meeting the other day was your resolution, Kevin. There were other ideas in that same meeting where there should have been other resolutions, which is what I'm going to talk about. You talk about a lesser amount. Let's talk about the fact and review of the facts of what the county has done. We're looking to overturn two boards' decisions. Maybe it was done ir ir irrationally, like you said, Mr. Casacone, but it's legal what they did. 
We have no interest in the uh, owned property, in the approved annexation that was approved. We don't have any park land there. We have no land in that portion. We've already invested $200,000 in a study which all of the municipalities are going to be able to use, which, again, we've initiated that because we've seen it as an important issue. Uh, the independent CGR study report and the objections raised by the county on the CICRA and other aspects of the possible annexation will be used as the basis for future litigation. It is recommended in that independent study report that no litigation be taken on behalf of the county due to many complications in annexation law and the CICRA report. Uh, we've invested resources in terms of additional time and money with our planning department in disputing many claims and filing objections for the FEIS on the annexations. We realize that the participating municipalities, although smaller in budget size than the county, have cooperatively decided that $25,000 apiece, or a current total of $200,000, is sufficient to litigate this possible annexation without knowing whether the county would even participate. So I'd like to recommend an amendment to this. And my amendment would be this, that we do join with the municipalities, which have already agreed to litigate, due to the request of those municipalities and the many requests we see from the numerous residents of the county. But that the county have an equal share of the responsibility for payment of attorney's fees for this litigation as individual municipalities, which is one eighth of the attorney fees for the litigation as an, in, I'm sorry, uh, as one part of the conglomerate of municipalities which are participating. So our $25,000, I'm agreeing that the county should contribute $25,000 with the knowledge that if more funds are needed, then the county legislature can convene at any time to vote to put additional funds forward for the purpose of pursuing this and any other related issues, which would make our contribution at $225,000 already. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Please, no more outbursts. You know, we've been very liberal with the copter, clapping, and uh, everybody's been very respectful today. And I don't want to hear any booing out there today, no matter which legislator speaks. You can, you can disagree 100% with what one or two legislators want to say up here today, but please, no booing, okay? Lee, you wanted to speak, but now we have a motion. Do you want to hold off to? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll hold off. I have different concerns for the first speaker after we discuss this. No problem. Unless it gets voted up. Yay. Uh, yes, Legislator Anagnostakis, and then on the, on the, on the amendment. Um, so, while I understand what my colleague is saying, and I think everyone on the stage knows that I'm the first to not want to increase spending anywhere and cut spending when it's not necessary. We also have to think of what's in front of us here. 200000 I feel is going to be a bare minimum. It doesn't take a genius, a rocket science, to figure out at $450 an hour, one or two lawyers at eight hours a day, how quickly the 200000 will disappear. And so this body, if it's committed to move forward with this, has to think that they will be committed to dollar amounts that may, at some point, be over half a million. At some point, may get close to a million. That's what we're getting into here. So to cut it down from 200,000 to 25,000, to me, you might as well just vote no and just be done with it. Um, I'm not gonna support that motion. I understand the logic behind it. I understand the intent to try to save some money, but we're gonna be in a lot deeper than 200,000 if we move forward. I'm gonna ask for a point of information from our attorney. If I understand correctly, even if we enter into this lawsuit, and our party with the other municipalities. At any time, county executive can take us out of the lawsuit unilaterally, and number two, if we ever exceed, or, or, or the cost exceeds the 200,000 that we've appropriated, this body would have to come back and appropriate more money. If it didn't, we would then effectively be out of the lawsuit. Are both of those statements correct? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. So, um, so I'll conclude my remarks by saying I'm not going to be able to support this resolution. Uh, if anything, 
If anything, after we take a vote on the 25,000, I might want to increase it to 300,000. Thank you. And thanks everybody for coming. Uh, I think we all acknowledge that this is probably the most emotional issue facing county government and your neighborhood. And uh, I'll even thank you for the hundreds of emails that I got. Uh, or maybe it's thousands at this point. Uh, I understand the fear, or at least I think I can begin to understand the fear uh, that people have. Big changes in your community, sense of loss of control. And this happens to neighborhoods and we have to try to accommodate that. So I'm, I'm trying to be supportive, but also I'm trying to acknowledge my responsibilities. Someone talked earlier about uh, the tax cap and we wanna make sure that we have it within a tax cap because uh, I'm a little bit surprised. I understand with the, the pressures at the moment that some people wanna say they wanna raise the, the limit. Uh, uh, why not? Raise it to a million. You mentioned a million dollars, so why not? Please don't vote for me because I'm not on board with that. I, I'm, I'm not on board with that. I think Mr. Paduk's uh, amendment, which I support, has the county as a partner resisting and changing the results of the annexation proceedings. They wanted a partner. We're willing to say yes but that doesn't mean that that uh it's the best interest of everyone in the county to, as to say like someone earlier said in the war that exists well uh, i i uh i think that i implore everyone to be generous of spirit and try to be reaching out to people and to appeal to our better natures of all of us and I think that uh, we can never go wrong if that's what we appeal to within ourselves. And I would also urge the same conduct from the residents of Kiryas Joel and the leadership as well. It's a, it's a two-way street. I also, I've been around for a while, folks, and government by lawsuit is not good government. It's, it's just not good government. It's not efficient. It's not well-planned. It's not cooperative. It's not a partnership. So I've voted for, on occasion, uh, lawsuits against municipalities. I'll tell you who the biggest winner is in the lawsuits, is the $450 an hour lawyer that was just mentioned earlier. They don't lose in this lawsuit. They win. The lawyers on both sides are going to make lots of money on this. So I asked a few of the uh, colleagues that I have, what is the likely, first, if I'm supposed to support uh, a lawsuit, well, what's the expectation of success? Well, of course, we have to determine what success is. But if success is overturning the annexation, I've been receiving information saying that that's a primarily a local government issue between the village and the town, and not the county. So that, so that the county, and this is according to New York state law, not our county law. This is New York state law. We didn't have to have a vote on whether there's gonna be an annexation. There was never a vote for that. It was never brought before this legislature, never intended to. So, okay, uh, I'd like to see uh, a cooperative spirit. I, I, I know it's difficult. I think we have to, in the long run, it's in everyone's best interest. Because they're not going away. The village of KJ is not going away. And neither are you, and neither am I. So what we need to do... Oh, please, please. What we need to do is to try to le learn to live together in a more cooperative spirit. I guess you're booing cooperation in a better spirit. Okay, that's okay. But no. Oh, bullying, please. Um, it's entitled to speak. And I, I pledge my cooperation 
for anybody that seeks the same goal of trying to act respectfully to all communities in Orange County, all communities, with the same standard. All right, now we come to uh, the other issues. I heard some of them, someone say, uh, of course, I want to keep it to the tax cap, so it's hard for me to just say, it, like in a bidding war, to spend money. This hasn't even gone through a legislative committee, I want to remind people. This has been so fast-tracked that it was, as far as I know, there was one executive session meeting the other night, and basically, that's it. So, that's more than fast-tracked. That's, that's uh, ultra-speed track. So, it, it makes me want to pause about the details, because I have a responsibility to do that. Someone said, we'll just give you a blank check. I, I, that was one among the most shocking statements that I've ever heard in government. I'm supposed to vote for giving other governments a blank check without an expectation of how much is going to be spent. And evidently, some people don't care. Well, I care. I care about how much money this county is spending on everything. So now that I've said that, and that I say that I don't like government by lawsuit, on the other hand, I see that the process that was used during the annexation proceeding was defective. How do I know that? Well, because the chairman, I mean the commissioner of planning, Mr. Church, identified several of the places, as did the CGR Chazen report. So, and that, for that reason, I feel I have a duty to address it. And I think that the courts are, are the appropriate setting to do that. So it's a question of what our goals are. It says here uh, in the Chazen Report, and those that have not read it, I urge you to read it because it was really uh, a learning experience for me. Because a lot of people have ideas about what's going on in Curious Joel and how it impacts on the county. I've heard lots of things. I heard people saying they don't pay property taxes. Well, that's not true. I heard people say that, uh, that uh, they don't report marriages in order to get welfare benefits. Well, that's not true. It is? Well, prove it to me. I'll be happy. I'll be happy to learn from you if you can prove it to me. That's not according to uh, the commissioners of the Department of Social Services. So, you know, there's a, there's, I understand the fear, I understand the, the, the concern, I understand you're worried about housing uh, values and, and your schools, I, I understand all that, but the key to that is to, is to have some respect, I think. It says here, instead of setting, settling these matters in the courts, this, will, this is our contribution of $200,000, folks. Instead of settling these matters in the courts, Orange County leaders would, be better, would better serve taxpayers by working to establish a climate in which growth can occur with the cooperation of municipal, county, regional, and state agencies. So that's, that's I think, the, the path. And I think what, when I come to the defects and why we have to address, I'm sorry for being long-winded, but this is emotional and, and a lot of time on the part of the legislature as well. You know, where did it go wrong? Well, it went wrong right in the beginning. I wrote a letter to the DEC suggesting that the DEC be the lead agency. Well, I think it was regrettable that they did not step up, that the state of New York didn't step up to their responsibilities, and they pushed it down to the village of Curious Joe. Well, that made me worried about the whole process right at the inception. Not to mention that the governor uh, did what he did uh, in, in regard to the whole issue. So what's a responsible action? I think joining as a partner, as Mr. Paduke suggests, is the way to go. I think that it doesn't limit how much money we can contribute. If other towns, uh, the consortium feels that they need additional funds, the county could, could and I'm sure would match each and every expenditure of those local governments. And thank you for uh, coming again. And again, I extend my hand of friendship and cooperation 
to all that are interested in going down that road. A roll call on? Okay. On the amendment. Yeah, Jeff, I took his time probably for the, he spoke mostly about the motion itself rather than the amendment. That's okay. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, also thank you all for coming. Um, uh, Legislator Hines, I unanimously backed by consent your resolution because the essence of your resolution is absolutely correct. Uh, but we haven't debated this at all. Uh, Legislator Chemnitz, I agree with you. Unfortunately, I think we need to get into a lawsuit with the coalition of the municipalities and attack this thing aggressively. <laughs> Mr. Moustakis, everything you stated was correct. But remember, in taking a look at the IMA intermunicipal agreement, and taking a look at our resolution, there are no caps put on the money. Neither, new, neither the municipalities nor us are permanently capping these things. What are we doing? What are we doing by putting in a number of 25,000 or 200,000 or whatever? We are capable at that point of taking a look of where we're at. There is no guarantee that if we put in 200,000 and there's 200,000 put in by the municipalities that we're going to be seeing anything because there's no IMA with us involved right now. We're going to be seeing anything until $400,000 is spent. And I believe that the lower amounts which were mentioned by Mr. Hines because the truth is folks we all spoke together. There's no Republican, there's no Democrat, there's no independence here. We all spoke. We want to be honest with one another. And so the fact that lower limits were put in it, or being offered at this point is for us to be able to take a look, stop and take a look at what the progress is in the litigation. And as mentioned by Mr. Berkman, at any point in time, we can you know, put another resolution up, look how fast we did this one, and put more money into it. Do I believe this is going to take more money than 25000 Do I believe it's going to take more money than 200000 My heart tells me, yeah, and I feel bad about that because it's the taxpayer's money. But we have people sitting in front of us. We have eight municipalities saying, do it. And that's the reason why I'm willing to do that. I need those points in this litigation, whether it's 25,000 or whatever it might be, to find out where we are in litigation, not to let it run wild, as you might have suggested, to 300,000 plus the 200 or a million plus the 200. I need to know where we're at and take a look at it. It's the only, it's not micromanaging, it's finding out how our money is spent, where it's spent, and deciding how to move further with it. So that's my reasoning behind looking at smaller amounts at this point in time. Yeah. I don't know if Lee was going to bring it up, but we did discuss it earlier with Rules Chairwoman um, Katie Benelli that about having monthly updates at the Rules Committee wherein all legislators would be invited. So uh, that, that is out there, and that's a concern. Um, was anybody else on the amendment? Roll call on the amendment, then? Yes. So the amendment is to reduce the dollar amount that we are capped at, and I'm sorry, there is a cap of 200,000 to reduce that to 25,000. Is that the amendment? No, not without a cap. It didn't say a cap. I didn't suggest a cap on 25,000. But well, the language says. You're at 200,000. Oh, you're saying only 25,000. At this time. I, I believe his amendment is to join with the other municipalities in the litigation and have an equal share. Uh, by contributing uh, 25,000, uh, with the knowledge that the county can, uh, county legislature can convene and appropriate a additional funds. Okay, roll call. Bonasek. No. Ekis. Yes. Amo. Yes. Nagnostakis. No. Benton. No. Berkman. Yes. Benelli. No. Cheney. 
Dillard? No. DeSalvo? No. Pagione? No. Hines? No. Hemnitz? No. Pulisic? No. Paduk? Yes. Ruskevich? No. Sullivan? No. Turnbull? Yes. Bureau? No. Russia? No. 16 eyes, 14 nose. Oh, not, not 16 Sorry. eyes. Six eyes. Six eyes. There we go. Okay. Okay, now back to the resolution proper, number one. Okay, discussion continuing. Uh, I believe Lee was the next speaker. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was prepared to bring a, an amendment today that the county go it alone by itself, um, not join the coalition. But I believe there's some statutory uh, errors in that or flaws that Antoinette has pointed out. I would like to agree with many things that Mr. Berkman said. I mean, we're now one of the old guys in this legislature, Jeffrey, and we had to take and make a decision before to sue over Seeger uh, discrepancies, let's call, let's call them. And I believe there was a you know, tremendous precedent set the last time by the judge where he ordered someone to go back, redo their Seekers. So in my idea, that's what I think is going to happen this time. And I'm the one who's, I'm glad I suggested the cap the other day in executive session to make sure that we could put a cap on this so that it doesn't get out of control, which I think things have gotten in the past. There doesn't seem to be, unfortunately, any way to cooperate. And that hasn't changed since the last time me and Mr. Berkman and probably three or four other people on this legislature that now sit here had uh, faced in the past. So. My main problem today was, and why I was put, uh, going to bring forth that amendment, um, was because in reading this MMA, uh, and again, I'm not satisfied, I'm not, we're not one of the eight municipalities, but in my opinion, uh, I don't think we should have been number nine with the way this is written. Statutorily also, again, remember the legislature doesn't negotiate contracts, so Sharon, and the county executive and with Antoinette's cooperation will be negotiating how we're going to enter into this coalition document. Because if you read it on page three, it says number three, each of the participating municipalities shall contribute on or before October 1, 2015, an initial amount of $25,000 to fund the litigation, which money shall be placed in an escrow account for the purpose of paying litigation expenses and if the majority of the participating municipalities agree, also for expert fees and expenses. Any of the participating municipalities may thereafter contribute additional monies to this escrow account. It doesn't say must or will. Also, the next sentence, no municipality is obligated by this agreement to contribute, contribute any monies after the initial contribution. The escrow account will be administered in accordance with these terms by the Village of Woodbury by and through its clerk uh, Ms. Poppin. The way I take that is, the county is looked at as just, well, we're the deep pocket. We want you to join in with us, okay? You have a $700 million budget. Some of these municipalities may have 12, 15, 25 million dollar budgets. And so, you're the big guy. Let's get the gorilla in the room. And you're going to front all the money after we're done just throwing in our 25. And that was my fear. That's why I wanted, wanted the cap. So all of these statements I'm making now are really recommendations to the county executive that I wanted to get put on the record and other legislators may want to comment on as well because this agreement here is uh, totally incomplete, if you ask me. When you go down to number seven, the adjudication of disputes and disagreements as provided for in General Municipal Law 119.02K shall be accomplished by a vote of a majority of participating municipalities. That just goes to further my point and cement it that, hey guys, you're one of nine. So it could be eight to one, five to four. Again, it's a concern of mine that this agreement that the coalition has uh, needs really to be tremendously updated for us to participate. And I'm gonna to vote to participate, but I'm gonna entrust that the county executive and the legal consultants of Antoinette and Sharon are able to 
uh, nail this down and cement it so that um, whether it's uh, some sort of a weighted vote system or something that is uh, in our favor in entering this coalitic agreement, if that's a proper word. Next speaker, uh, Katie, I think, was she was first, Roseanne. Okay. Then Roseanne. You want to go first, Roseanne? Okay. You guys play it out. <laughs> want to flip the coin? Or? Okay. All right. Uh, obviously, none of us are going anywhere right now, so I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, obviously, I've had a lot of discussions with my various colleagues here, and I do agree with the statements that Legislator Benton just said, because, and I'm looking at it a little differently, though, in weighing our options as to how we proceed, how can we contribute to address this issue? How are we best served by that? Are we best served by joining the municipalities at this point in time? Or quite frankly, are we best, are we best served by hiring our own outside council and work concurrently along with this? Because there's another way of looking at this. This county for far too long, I've been in government since 1992 I took office. And this was an issue back then. And for whatever reasons, and you can all join your own conclusions, but it was ignored. We talk about taking the hard look. Well, we too should have been taking the hard look. And for various different reasons, a multitude of things have been ignored. Not only on this level, not only on the local level, and I don't have to tell you about the state level. <laughs> that brings us here today. We all do want to work together. And as somebody said, you know, this, this is, we're, we're now at the 11th hour. This is where we have to, you know, we have to make this decision. We have to move forward. Well, this isn't just the 11th hour. This is just the beginning. Because if we don't start to change the way we look at things and the way we try to pursue addressing an issue that is not going to go away with one lawsuit, because all we do is write checks for attorneys to become rich, and then three months, three years down the road, we're faced with the same thing again. This legislative body can make a difference. And it can make a difference by starting to look at things a little differently. Now you're going to have to beg your indulgence and take my colleagues back to a few years ago when we all sat down in a dispute resolution training class. Very simple, basic things. But it drove home a point to all of us that were there. Based, look at the issues. Look at the issue at hand. If there is a problem with the Harriman sewer treatment plant, which there definitely is, then let's address that. Put everything else aside. Put your personal issues aside. Check them in the doorway when you come in to leave. But unfortunately, this thing has gotten so out of hand that we don't have a lot of different alternatives. They're, they're out there. We must continue to pursue this. So I'm sitting here weighing, well, OK, that's great. You want to support the municipalities. But quite frankly, we may be an albatross around their necks. And as I think Mr. Berkman said, We've only discussed this once because of the time frame here. We haven't discussed it as a legislative body. Handfuls of us in groups have discussed it, but I felt that it was important, and I'm glad that Legislator Benton brought that out, as far as we've seen the agreement that is now public with all of the municipalities. We are yet, as this legislative body, to see what the agreement that the county attorney's office and the county executive will be negotiating on our behalf. And I think that this body needs to go on record to send a message to the county, the county executive as to the things that we want to see and that we want to be able to continue to monitor this. And as Chairman Brescia said, I do chair the Rules Committee, and I have committed that we will do updates on a regular basis to get an analysis and get a report. How much have we spent? Where are we? We need to continue to do that, because all too often, we come in, we pass a resolution, we allocate a certain amount of money, we go to court, and we walk away. 
and then we don't revisit it again until another issue comes. And, and quite frankly, I'm tired of doing that. Okay, any other speakers? Okay. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. Next. Thank you. So I'm voting yes today, um, and I'm also voting to. Um, I'm also voting for unity. I think there's strength in numbers. I think unity is a very, very important concept. And that's why I'd like to join in with the other municipalities. Because I represent all Orange County residents, not just the residents in my district. My legislative district, which represents Crawford and parts of the town of Wallkill, is roughly a 10 to 15 minute drive on 17 from here. We depend on much of the same infrastructure as well as the same county budget. My legislative district will also most definitely be immediately affected by a similar development in a neighboring county. And guess what? So will every single one of your legislative districts. Just give it time. Throughout our country, religious rights is being confused with what we consider to be government and democracy. I'm going to agree with Mr. Sussman today when he said, and I think it's worth repeating, as a, as a county, we should not allow the creation of a village centered around religion. It is our responsibility to protect our residents, all residents, from this grossly <coughs> improper plan to laugh in the face of our forefathers. This has been a state issue for much longer than it has been a concern right here. Since the creation of the KJ School District, public taxpayers, all public taxpayers, have been paying for the religious instruction of a very unique school district. A school district created solely for religious purposes. The state budget, our public school system, has suffered already financially, democratically, and through infrastructure due to this. This is our chance to send a message, a strong message to our Governor Como that we will not be silent and we will not turn our backs on the oath which we all took to protect our residents, all the residents of Orange County. Now, Mr. Newhouse, I, I appreciated your words today, and I'm going to even challenge those words even further, and I'm going to implore you to begin investigating the improper use of our services right here in the county, which we are all paying for. Investigate, allow your staff members to investigate and to arrest anyone who is committing fraud. I, also, I, I would also like to focus on something that you can do as well. And we can, as a legislature, stop the land grab by insisting on information ownership information of any so-called LLC yeah. that wants to go into a contract with this county. Let's show Governor Como what true leadership is. It starts right here. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, um, I think it's pretty sure you know I'm going to vote. Let me explain something before I begin. I think since the very, very beginning, and, and I think you may be surprised at my, 
my thinking on this. Since the very beginning, there's not a person on this stage, a member of this legislature, or probably in Orange County, that thought that this event, this annexation, whether we started back on Woodbury or where else, or base farms, or whatever we're talking about, would not end up in court. If somebody thought that, I don't think they were doing their homework or listening. We expect it's going to go to court. And I expect, in fact, today that vote will, will solidify that and we'll be moving forward to go to court. But the problem is, what is the outcome that that court will give us? We don't know that for sure. And I'm not confident at this point that if they rule in the favor of Kira's Joel, everybody here is going to be kumbaya. What if they rule in the favor of you? What will Kira's Joel do? Are we going to appeal? Are we going to go on and on and on and create more and more acrimony? We'll get a decision. There's no doubt about it. And even if we change a venue, if there's been that, we'll get a decision. But is that really the way to go? This legislature struggled with this in December of 2013. And shame on us and the county executive for not moving faster. This application was submitted in 2013. And we're sitting almost two years later saying, we got to do something about it. Where were we in January of 2014? looking at this thing and talking about it and having dialogue. We know it was coming. Shame on us for not moving forward. I certainly have spoke about it in all the committees and my voice is not always heard, but it's something we need to address. We <coughs> contracted for $200,000, as Mr. Paduk said, to try to find out. Is what we're reading in the Times Herald record really correct? Is this really the true story? The CGI report came back. It was, an, it was balanced. There were problems, no doubt about it, but there wasn't all the myths that were out there. A lot of them were so resolved. And, and we, we still have it there. And I don't think at this point it's a strong document for our side to win a lawsuit on. And, and somebody's going to use it because it was our legislature that commissioned this quote unquote independent report. And I, I compliment the county executive for not interfering with it and allowed to be independent. So it would have that done. So what do we do now? Mr. Newhouse said, we kick this thing down the road. That's what we've been doing. Well, he's right. We've been kicking it down the road. Over the 17 years that I've been in the county legislature, representing the village of Kiris Joel, I've been, it's been a real challenge to me. And you can imagine. Especially when I took this task, I had absolutely no background, understanding of their culture or their religion. It was a totally new experience to me. But as taxpaying residents of the county, they have a right to be represented. And that's what I'm doing. I'm representing them because they have a right. They may not have the same needs and desires that we have. I don't live in Kira's Joel. But like residents of Port Jervis, or maybe inner, two, inner city Newburgh, or Middletown, or Warwick, there's some diverse groups, and they have different needs and different goals in their life. We're not all the same. That problem is the differences are a stark contrast to most of us in this county who came and had come to the suburbs to want that kind of lifestyle. But denying this problem that we have of cultural clash, as the Times Hill record said, is a real problem. Well, addressing our county, this in the county, that's the real challenge we should be taking on. And maybe it'll happen after we have this lawsuit. First step we must do is open dialogue with further understanding of the village and its people. And, a self and this self-imposed insular lifestyle that create, creates many obstacles. But obstacles, if we are committed, we can overcome. Too often these obstacles are met with the response that they must try as well. Well, I agree they must try. Unfortunately, this response has frozen, frozen our further discussion while we wait for Kira Stroll to make the first move. My tenure in the legislature, I've invited elected officials from my town other towns, I've invited clergy, I've invited county residents to join me in a visit to the, care, to the village, to meet the rabbis, to meet the grand rabbi, to talk to people, to say, this is what I want. With only a few exceptions, and I won't mention names here because we all know who has and hasn't done that, I'm still waiting for an RSVP. I can remember a situation where I asked a pastor of the Catholic Church in Monroe, would he come, because I'm Catholic, would he come with me and go in and meet the rabbis and talk about the issues and maybe provide some discussion in his pastoral ministry with his congregation to kind of help people understand this? Yes, he would. Well, I'm still waiting for that RSVP. Some of you may know the gentleman named who passed away, Stephen Covey, who's a renowned consultant 
and most a motivational speaker and author. And he gave us sage advice when he said, seek first to understand, then to be understood. This surely is good advice for Orange County Legislature as we struggle with this cultural dilemma. How can we address this struggle, or how we address it, will leave an indelible mark on our county, on our people, and all of us. We can see how near, from near and far, our other people have failed. We've heard some of them today. We're fearful we're going to fail too and have a bad situation. We've seen how leaders of other, of other parts of our county and the state have all failed. We have the opportunity not to fail and have a chance to do it right. I don't think suing is the answer, but it's going to happen. It just perpetuates an adversarial, adversarial relationship, a win-lose situation, and that's what we're going to have. The independent report by the Center of Government Research has been quoted before. I won't quote it again. Mr. Berkman read it perfectly. They recommend that we try to find a climate to have a discussion. Once we move into adversarial situation, that discussion will not come forth until the judge rules, because there's no reason to do that. We're, we're in a conflict. So like it or not, the Village Cure Stroll is here to stay. I came to this county in 1978 when I first came down to work for Mid-Hudson Psychiatric Center as one of their administrators. They were here in 1973. I knew they were there. We knew when they moved up. We watched the whole process grow. We've all complained, we've all done things, but we never changed anything. And this village, as others said, is likely to stay with us for the foreseeable future. How we handle that reality will define us and define our country. Well, what we know, what we know, is that the village of Kirishville will grow with or without this annexation. That's that's a terrible thing to say because it, you feel like you got a gun to your head. What am I going to do? But it's real. They now have a majority population in a town of Monroe. They represent more people. And there's more people in the village of Kirishol as a per percentage group than in Monroe. Well, that, that, the majority is not recognized. They're still perceived almost as a majority. They're a large population percentage of our county. Six percent right now, said the CGR report, and growing. Denying that they're an integral part of our county is a fantasy. Embracing this is a smart way to go. <coughs> During my 17 years in the legislature, I've seen the hostility between Kirishtol and its neighbors accelerate. This is well documented by police agencies who keep track of social media, who keep track of emails, and the Orange County District Attorney's Office is currently doing it. We know that there's problems there. And if you don't believe that, ask somebody in the police agency in your town if there's not documented emails that would raise the hair in the back of your neck. People in Orange County. And I'm not saying either side. That's not a good thing to live in a county that does that. Yet our approach has been to ignore these trends, to stop their growth by any means that was possible. In the late 1990s, when I first came into the legislature, we imposed a building moratorium because we had lack of sewer. That failed because the county was compelled by the courts to lift the moratorium because we were building Walmart and Home Depot, that lot up there, and they they want a court action that they had. We had to provide support. That's our obligation. They won. We would have to pay a huge fine if Kiris Joel did not turn over their plant to the county, so we could supply the sewer to that particular building. We got out of the lawsuit, but the moratorium was lifted. When available in water, water in the southern county, county, county became sparse, and some of you here remember the days when when people wells were going dry and there were problems, were really concerned about it, Kirishol offered to bring in a pipeline. People said, oh, that's a real problem because that's just going to create the growth. Well, yeah, that may do that too. But they offered, if some of you don't know that, when they made it, and I have some colleagues on the, on the table who were working on this one, when they originally proposed it, they offered to provide Potable water, water that would go from, the, from New Windsor all the way to Kyrgyz Toll and available to anybody along the way that wanted it. Yeah, they offered it. It was turned down. It was turned down. So what did we do? Led by the legislature, we're doing just what we did today. We sued. We said your seeker for the pipeline was inadequate. We spent a lot of money in that suit, and the judge said, correct it. Give me back your correct report move on with your pipeline. 
Right now, the pipeline is probably 60% complete, I'm, I'm guessing. We know last week the Department of Transportation, New York State, gave them the permit to work on 32. Well, they don't have the Orange County permit in Connywood, but they're now moving on 32. A protracted battle that, and this pipeline has been suddenly the court and now it's underway. There are many, many more examples that we can talk about and many of us remember. Now we're faced with annexation and our solution is to take legal action, again to stop the growth. Recent history has proven this has never really worked. Remember the popular definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and over again but expecting a different result. It's time for Orange County Legislature to find a different way to solve this county-wide problem. And it is a problem. The county needs to find a solution that will address all our interests, move us in a united, multicultural county of which we all can be proud. Frankly, my colleagues in the legislature, this choice is ours. We, are, we will continue, either we will continue to legislate by magistrate, as Mr. Burkman suggested, sue, legislate by magistrate, or we will first seek to find, first seek to understand and then be understood. It's our decision what path we want to take. I'm sure the first one's going to be sued, but let's keep the other door open to see if there's a way that we can find that will make allow us to live together in some kind of harmony. Thank you. Chris. Thank you again. I'm going to be pretty brief. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Hines, uh, I think you were aware I was going to offer another amendment, but I'm almost feeling sorry for all these people out here. Uh, I don't think we want to go through it, and I think I get the feel that somehow you're either a brilliant man or very convincing, because I have a feeling that your resolution will go through. So, okay, it's both. Thank you. Uh, what I did want to mention, though, is that, uh, Mr. Benton, uh, I agree with everything that you said. And I just wanted to give uh, the municipalities, I wanted to give these people, I wanted to give the county exec and, and ourselves a little more credit. I agree that we as a county are the big pockets and the gorilla in the room, but I don't think these people would all be out here looking for you know $10, $100, millions of dollars. I think they know that we have the biggest piece in this lawsuit. We have the biggest say in this lawsuit. And that's really more why we're the gorilla in the room. And I think that's why we're going to vote the way that we will ultimately in the end. Katie, you want to say uh, since I sit over here, I seem to absorb people's thoughts because actually what I did want to say was when it comes to all of this, when it comes to divvying up the responsibilities, if in fact, which it seems likely that we may, join with the municipalities. Well, we bring with us not only, if you want to call it deep pockets, but we also bring that contribution, but we also bring a lot of different issues that they wouldn't have had the responsibility to address in their lawsuit because we want to be able to address other types of responsibilities and get people to the table to discuss that above and beyond the things that they're particularly very, very centered on. So I'm agreeing with you. I did want to say a few words, but I'm not going to go over the process. I just want to say that I do respect the secret process as a municipal official. We follow it closely in the village of Montgomery, as I'm sure Harriman does, Cornwall does, Monroe does, and all the other municipalities. Um, I voted for the litigation with the secret uh, with respect to the pipeline a long time ago because it wasn't followed properly. And we should have learned, AJ should have learned their lesson back then to do it properly this time. So that's why I'm going to vote for this litigation. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? No. Magnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Benelli? Yes. Keeney? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Baggione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Hemnance? Yes. Pulisek? Yes. Paduk? Ruskevich? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Turnbull? I'm sorry? Yes. Bureau? Yes. Gresham? 19 ayes, 1 no.